What's up you guys, it is your boy Techie Chris and I am back here with another video. Guys, today in this video, I'm going to be telling you guys about five things that I use daily as a network engineer. As a network engineer, obviously you guys know that there are many applications that we use. Just as any IT professional, there are multiple different applications that we use, but I've kind of formulated this list into what I believe are some of the things that I, I'm in daily for my specific tasks. And obviously there are more things that I am working in on a daily basis, but these things that I'm about to tell you guys about are pretty much the heavy hitters for me in my current job and I guess kind of my work that I'm doing. Some of you guys might have other things that you would have wanted to put on the list but this is kind of catered to myself. But yeah, guys, before we get into the video, just a quick announcement, you guys feel free to go ahead and join my Discord. The link will be in the description below. Also, you guys are free to go to my website, www.techychris.com, and you guys can interact with me there. You can join my Discord. You guys can send me messages there. Um, set up time with me to have a free consultation just so we can talk, just so I can get to know you guys and kind of help you also excel inside of your tech career. Now that all that is out of the way, let's go ahead and get straight to the video. So the first tool that I use as a network engineer is going to be SolarWinds. SolarWinds is a network monitoring tool that I use to pretty much manage and monitor all the nodes inside of the environment that I work in. Anytime that a node goes down or anytime that um, anything happens, pretty much just monitoring in general, we will get alerted by SolarWinds. SolarWinds is very similar to other monitoring systems. Um, you kind of are able to arrange everything by IP address and then kind of arrange everything by the specific location that devices are. And you just get alerts from it, like SNMP alerts whenever you know stuff goes wrong. And even if like you have to do maintenance on a specific device, you are able to go into SolarWinds and you are able to go to SolarWinds and pretty much mute the device so that the rest of the team isn't getting, you know, swarmed with alerts when you are doing maintenance on a specific device. SolarWinds is also able to back up a lot of, you know, the configurations for switches. So we get reports from SolarWinds about the devices inside the environment, like the routers and the switches. And we get those back and we're able to view the reports and verify that everything is looking right and up to date inside of the backups. Some other SNMP monitoring systems would be things like Datadog, OP Manager, Managed Engine. Um, I, I believe Splunk also does a little bit of SNMP monitoring, but those are kind of the category that um, SolarWinds falls into. It's an SNMP monitoring system. So I kind of just mentioned a few of the many things that SolarWinds does, but like monitoring services in general, they have so many different capabilities. Um, you, you're like even able to kind of get a geographic view of, you know, the, the nodes inside of your environment. Like it, there's so many capabilities to do. You're able to run scripts to run different, you know, configurations at a later time. Um, so many things that we do with, you know, monitoring systems, but that is all for SolarWinds at the moment. And let's go ahead and move into the next one. So the next tool that I'm going to talk about now is going to be Secure CRT. Secure CRT is a configuration terminal and um, another configuration terminal I also use is PuTTY. So I kind of use PuTTY and Secure CRT together, not necessarily together, but sometimes depending on the node, if it's a node that I can get to really quick, I'll just hop into PuTTY and type in the IP address. But Secure CRT, the way um, it's formulated is more of an organizational way, right? So with Secure CRT, you're able to kind of divide your um, your locations and your sites into different folders, and you're able to kind of always have access to those devices in SSH. So the way Secure CRT is, I'm able to have a folder, like many different folders of different devices, and then I just press one folder. Um, there might be like three different devices at that in that folder for that specific site, and I go into that device, and I'm able to just you know maneuver through the different devices at ease. I personally like Secure CRT over PuTTY, but you know some connections that are easier to do with PuTTY because on Putty, you're able to just type in the IP address and go to it. But you're, you're also able to do the same thing with Secure CRT, but sometimes Secure CRT requires that you put a password in before you even get into the device. Whereas to Putty, um, as long as you've logged in at a specific time, you're able to log right back into that device. This also changes depending on the environment that you're working in, but that's kind of like a broad overview of how Secure CRT and Putty are different. But with, for me, I go with Secure CRT most of the time. Another reason that makes Secure CRT better in my eyes is Secure CRT, you're able to create buttons where you're able to like put a specific line of command and you're able to just press that line and then it will paste on your configuration terminal and run a command for you. It has a lot of different automation options and overall for me, I feel like it's a more intuitive system. Not to shame on PuTTY, it's just that PuTTY doesn't have as many features and capabilities as Secure CRT. But that is expected because one is free and 
one does cost a little bit more money. The next one that we're going to talk about is ServiceNow. ServiceNow or pretty much any ticketing system like Zoho, Zendesk, Freshdesk. There's so many different ticketing systems out there, even Jira. But for me personally, I am the most familiar with ServiceNow. Um, I've worked in ServiceNow for maybe about three different organizations that I have been a part of. And ServiceNow, um, for me, I like it quite a bit. Yes, it's a ticketing system, but not only is it a ticketing, ticketing system, they have a lot more features and capabilities that you're able to utilize with ServiceNow. For instance, in ServiceNow, we're able to track reoccurring tasks, we're able to track outages, we're able to track the on-call list. We're also able to put in knowledge bases for um, other people to come and look back and see the documentation of things that we did in the past. Overall, ServiceNow has a lot more features than just this, but, but the ticketing system is really the main selling point for ServiceNow. Anytime the help desk or any other like lower tier, anytime the help desk or pretty much anybody sends a ticket to the networking team, it's usually escalated from the help desk and sent to us. But there are those people who submit tickets to you know the network team directly, but we're able to kind of track all the incidents and tickets that happen within the environment in ServiceNow. ServiceNow is kind of one of those heavy hitters in the game. Um, some people tend to stay away from it because it is more on the expensive side, but when you work for a larger organization, a lot of the times you're going to see ServiceNow or one of the other bigger ticketing systems. For number four, the next thing that I use daily as a network engineer is going to be Microsoft Excel. Yes, this might sound cliche. It might sound like common knowledge, but the truth is that a lot of people are not very good with Excel. Excel is one of those things that it makes a lot easier for you to track and you know keep things in order. A lot of times when you work as a network engineer or pretty much any IT professional, you're having to export different files and, and you're having to export different files into Excel documents. You also might import those same files into different systems or software. Excel is something I use pretty much on a daily when tracking and pretty much just keeping up with different workflow. For instance, if I am working on a project with a team member and we kind of want to list out everything that we are going to have to do for that project. And when I say everything, I mean like all the different locations, maybe all the different devices, we will just list them out in Excel and then we will make a shared spreadsheet and and tackle it that way. And when we tackle it that way, we're kind of able to see where each other are and kind of, if someone needs help, we're able to kind of help them out with that on one shared document. So I really like Excel. Pretty much everybody knows what Excel is, but that is the fourth thing that I use daily as a network engineer. Last, but certainly not least, is going to be Infoblox. Infoblox is an IP address management system, and this is kind of used to just keep up with the different IP addresses inside of your environment. With Infoblox, you're able to kind of keep the IPs in order and kind of know, you can do a lot of different things related to IP address management within Infoblox. You can make sure that DNS names are connected with the appropriate IP address within Infoblox. You also have a lot of different IP address management systems, so you can have a better understanding of the ISP circuits that might be running into your environment. You're also able to keep track of the internal IP address ranges that you have set for different sites and locations. For me, Infoblox is a great tool to use. Um, as someone who works very heavily with DNS, I work out of Infoblox quite a bit. But yeah, those are the main tools I use daily as a network engineer. And 110%, there are so many other tools that I use as a network engineer. But to list and say every single one of those tools is really, really hard. There's things like Catalyst Center, Cisco Ice, so many other things that we use on a daily basis, but it's kind of hard to put everything in one video. And yeah, absolutely, I could definitely put them in one video, but for me, this came out of the things I touch and interact with more frequently. Yeah, guys, that's it for the tools that I use. Like I said earlier in the video, guys, feel free to join my free Discord community. If you wanna connect with like-minded people who are also in tech, definitely get on the Discord. Make sure that you guys follow me on all my social media. I am on Instagram, I am on TikTok, obviously I'm on YouTube. I'm taking Chris on all of my platforms. But yeah, guys, that's pretty much it for this video. And I do appreciate you all for watching. We are almost at 5,000 subscribers and it means so much to me. Um, starting off this YouTube, I did not think that I would get so far with it. So I'm really appreciative of everyone who's supporting and you know interacting with the channel. But yeah, guys, that is it for me. Thank you so much for watching and I'm out of here.